because of a gentleman that you were willing to welcome as our own brother? Uh, well, he was. We kind of know that in our heads when we welcome each other. But uh, those are the moments, the laughter and the joy as you are gathering in this place. And I can't, I have, I got a lot of words, um, but I don't have enough that say it in the right way, what a gift you are as a congregation to one with a pastor's heart, uh, because we, you do allow me to share life with you. And that, my friends, is the root of joy when we allow God to move among us. And so thank you seems so inadequate. Uh, but that's all I've got. Now, that's not all I have for the sermon, so... <laughs> Let's don't be disappointed later on when I use a lot more words, but, but thank you, and I love you very much. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, as we uh, prepare to begin a time of worship, I want to call your attention to the bulletin uh, for a moment uh, because there are several announcements there that we do need to uh, take care of. So welcome. Um, I don't know that we were, that Facebook was rolling whenever we did all of that. Uh, Eric is shaking his head no. So uh, a welcome to all of you, uh, those who are here uh, and also those who are going to be joining us live stream and uh, finding us at a later date. It's those that may not be here and have a bulletin in their hands in particular. We hope get all the right information, so please don't be shy about sharing with your neighbors and with your friends, but uh, now comes a huge onslaught of all kinds of joy and uh, goodwill for one another. So this is what's happening here in the life of the church uh, moving forward. Christmas caroling uh, this afternoon, I believe uh, Betsy uh, is in charge of all of that. And so if if you don't mind raising your hand, if you don't know anything about, there she is, if you don't know anything about the caroling, she's your girl, and she can tell you all the good information uh, as we uh, go to share with those of our family and friends uh, who are uh, not able to get out. Next Sunday uh, will be our joint cantata experience in worship. Now here's where we got to use our um, thinking caps just a little. So uh, Sunday school will still meet at the same time. We will not be in here at 845. I'll be here so if you want to come and just hang out that'll be fine. Uh, but worship will happen at 11 o'clock in the Friendship Hall. Uh, that's when, as a part of our worship time, uh, the joint cantata will be presented by Grace United Methodist Church Choir and our church choir. They've been working really hard. We have a, is it 14 or 15 piece orchestra? And uh, Rick's been a slave driver, uh, making them work really hard. Yeah, he's a pushover. So, um, so we hope that you'll come and participate in that experience of worship, 11 o'clock next Sunday morning. The well, the service that normally happens at 11, we've decided to move to 5.30 just for that one week, and we will be leading folks in a longest night, brightest hope. Uh, service, kind of like a blue Christmas service. There's not a one of us who's not dealing with some of the um, junk that happens on in life this side of glory. And so if you're looking for a reflective service, uh, a time to kind of think about how God is present even when it seems like the darkness is growing, then that is a service for you. I would just drop this little hint. Uh, you, you can worship twice in one day and it not send you into any kind of a rigmarole or well, I don't know what the word my grandma would have used but it'd be a wonderful time for us to celebrate together so uh, hope that you'll come and share that with us and then Christmas Eve uh, is on a Saturday 3 30 and uh, 8 30 are the times uh, they'll um, anyway the rest of the information is there uh, so hope that you will be a part uh, of our celebration of the coming of the Christ. It is a joy for us to be here. Let's worship God.
wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing will flee away. The prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of ascending to God's house. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is just as much a joy. And the psalmist reminds us, happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, who gives food, who sets prisoners free, who opens eyes, lifts up, watches over, upholds, the Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, and of deep and everlasting joy, as a sign that we are those who walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination, and it is pure. We are ascending to God's promise. Now, if you will stand, if you are comfortable and able, for our hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 and 6, found on page 211 in your hymnal or on the screen. If you remain standing for the Advent Affirmation of Faith, it's on your screen or in your bulletins. We believe in God, creator and lover of the earth, origin and destiny of us all. We believe in Jesus Christ, God coming to us in the fragile promise of a baby yet unborn, who emerges as a herald of hope, God's laughter in the face of despair. Plunged into death and hell, he broke free the captives and is leading the way to the land of promise where justice and peace will flourish. We believe in the Holy Spirit who in the seed of truth brings us to earth as the body of Christ and empowers us to confront and transform all that is corrupt 
degrading, and deceitful. We believe in the coming reign of God, announced by the Baptist, it has drawn near to us in Jesus, and will be consummated in the glorious marriage of earth and heaven, when all who have passed through the world's deep sorrow will be raised from the waters, robed in righteousness, and gathered in the joyous fulfillment of God's desire. For the coming of that day, on this day, we work and pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings favored one the Lord is with you. But she was so much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to have been barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today we lit a, a candle that's a little different than the others on the Advent wreath. I don't know if you noticed or not. Uh, but on a typical uh, Advent wreath, uh, there is one pink candle among uh, the purples as we count the weeks preparing and getting closer and more excited to celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's the can sometimes called the candle of Mary, but it's always because we remember Mary's joy at this particular time. And that is not the way her cousin's husband, Zachariah, welcomed the same angel with very similar news. When he got word about Elizabeth's end to her barrenness. Now how in the world is this going to happen? <laughs> Not the way that Mary was already ready for the good news of how it would happen. And so today we talk about joy, everlasting joy. Uh, you, I hope you got a, a little sheet of, well, well, it's not a little sheet of paper. It's a big sheet of paper. Did, do we have any extras? Because the choir didn't, ha didn't get any. Can I, Bob, do you mind bringing me some of those? There's a, what you got is a, a list that was made in 2015. If you can remember back that far, so much has happened since then. Thank you, friend. Are you going to get them? Uh, so in 2015, the Today Show uh, had their viewers um, kind of communicate with them and uh, make the list. I, I don't know if you've had a chance. I know y'all haven't had a chance to really look at it yet. But uh, uh, in the top ten, uh, get a load of this. Uh, sleeping in a freshly made bed. Uh, there are some who are already nodding their head, you know. You, you know, uh, feeling the sun on your face, someone saying thank you. I think the inference there is like you didn't expect them to say thank you or somebody's done a special act of kindness that you weren't expecting. Finding money in an unexpected place or freshly made bread. The problem that I see with the list uh, maybe because my perspective is a little wonky, but um, I, I know that there are folks who don't have a bed and that there are some who have to beg for every dime that they get and others who haven't smelled freshly made bread in so long they don't remember what it smells like. Happiness is fleeting. Now, here's what I want you to do, though. I want you to take that list and with somebody else in your family or your circle of friends, you see that space on the right-hand side, that empty space there? I want you to add your own <laughs> ideas to it. What is it that makes you smile? Uh, what... Uh, to, to what experience would you add 
um, uh, would you uh, address with the word happy? Uh, when the cast of the Today Show got to add their own, did you, did you see that? A shower with great water pressure. <laughs> now we laugh because that would probably be on our list too. Uh, the smell of a newborn baby's head. Most of the time, yes, most, most of the time. The, the thing is, is when you look at, at, at what happiness is, where we find that in this year that we have lived together, instead of a list of all of those things that we love to experience, most of the places that I looked are about how we can make ourselves happier. So it's not just the stuff that happens to us. Uh, for instance, Denver Health did a big survey <coughs> about nine months in, and these were some of their suggestions, that, that you could make yourself uh, more available to those experiences that would make us happy. Take 10 deep breaths. Go outside. Smile more. You, you start it. And then put down your phone. I... I I noticed you didn't laugh whenever I said that because, you know, it's not just the young'uns that have a problem with that. So, ooh, sorry, different sermon. Uh, there, but then there are other things, too, practicing the things that we know about as disciples of this one whom we pray will come soon again. Practicing daily gratitude practicing maybe even daily acts of kindness, spending money on experiences and not just stuff, volunteering, giving back, all of those things recognize that something else has already come to you first. Now what do we do with it? So what happened to Mary... Uh, there at her own home, uh, led to something deeper than happiness. Um, we'll get to the definition of happy and why we can boldly make that claim in just a moment. But it's because the kingdom of God was unfolding and she had been chosen by God to be a special part of that. And the kingdom of God not only is, it will always be bigger than happiness we, we've talked about two of these ways that the prophet Isaiah has described this coming kingdom of God, not just uh, uh, at the end of this age one day, but even unfolding among us now. The, the promised kingdom is about the end of chaos, uh, the unity of humanity, the common pursuit of divine wisdom, and a cosmic peace. I mean, peace in every molecule and so corner of the universe. And in Isaiah 11, that was from Isaiah 2. In Isaiah 11, we learned last week that that uh, day when we welcome Emmanuel among us in a different way, we will discover we live without fear even in our most vulnerable moments because of the full knowledge of God being aware in this very moment that God is close and so there is no need for us to fear. And I don't know whether you heard those words or not, but in a way Gabriel was announcing to Mary that what Isaiah prophesied in the 35th chapter of his work, that's what she was going to be a part of. A miraculous birth of the Son of God that was going to flip everything upside down, and God has chosen you. If you look at Isaiah 35, there's this beautiful uh, picture that Isaiah draws with his words again of creation, all of creation, knowing that exceeding joy. L listen, to th listen to this. The wilderness will rejoice. The dry land will blossom and blossom abundantly. 
and the desert will break out with joy and with singing. There's going to be strength for our weakness, firmness for our feebleness. It's as if all of creation is saying, here is your God. He is coming to save you. Now, if that don't inspire some singing, I don't know what would. You see, the promise is for a holy way to be made. We shared those words with you when we introduced the candle that would be lit today. That holy way that God is making, I want you to know that that is the very nature of who God is. God has always made a way for us. Is making this kind of abundant, absolute, joyful way for us. And we'll always be making a way through. That's why even on the longest night of the year, we can gather and claim God's sweet promises in Emmanuel to get us through when we don't feel so highly jolly. But this way um, for humanity, for all of humanity that God is making, will always include the joy that gives us strength. Do, do you remember where we get where that verse comes from? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Dun, 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 dun. I, I kind of meant for you to. From Nehemiah. Oh my, oh Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah was not a prophet, but was caught up in the exile and then was summoned back to Jerusalem by buddies that he grew up with and served with to take a look at all of the damage that had been done when Babylonia kind of ransacked the town and he was broken hearted. He never even imagined how bad it was. Well, he asked for permission from the folks that would say yes or no. They allowed Nehemiah to come back. And his words to the remnant left in Jerusalem were, this is a good day. This is a good day. We have discovered the ways that uh, God communicated with our uh, ancestors. And we are promised his love. We've got what we need, friends, to be able to do all that we're called to do. It's a good day. It is the joy of the Lord that will be our strength. Strength enough to rebuild the wall. Strength enough to be able to restore the temple so that they would have a, a common place to worship. That holy way will always include joy. Is there a difference between happiness and joy? That's kind of a preacher question. You already know the answer to that is yes, there is a difference. There is a difference because uh, happiness is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as a feeling or the, the showing of pleasure or contentment. It's discernible. When you are happy. Uh, another definition for happy uh, from Wikipedia, having a sense of confidence in something or someone or satisfaction with something or someone. It comes from the Middle English. Do you remember studying that in school? <laughs> sorry, English teachers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but it comes from the Middle English language and it means lucky. Well, those of us who have heard God call our name know that luck means nothing. God has already decided that it's not, not only in God's nature, but that he makes the choice to bless us so that we will be a blessing to other people. And so instead of happy, we've got to look at what the true meaning of joy is. And so whether you look in the Hebrew or the Greek, the Greek is a lot easier to say. They mean the same thing. Chara is, is the word. C-H-A-R-A. Chara. Uh, uh, charismatic, we've already been through a lot of that. That's where the, the root for a lot of those words is. And here's all that joy is and everything that joy is. The awareness of God's grace and favor for you. 
Grace means God is leaning toward us. Grace is when you know God is leaning toward you, that you have experienced the grace of God and you receive it uh, as a gift. When you recognize those shafts of light breaking through the clouds like they haven't done in a very long time, when you get caught up in the laughter, pure laughter of a child, and it makes you giggle too. Chara, this joy of the Lord, well, there's something else about it that moves us way beyond uh, happiness or the description of being lucky. Chara, the joy of the Lord, not only is in recognizing God's grace, it, that we know joy, it also means you are so full of joy that you cannot any longer keep from singing, from shouting, from dancing, from laughing. You can't help it. You just want to jump or you want to cheer. You want to woohoo or hallelujah. And so much more. All of that. And so much more. There's a word for that in the Bible. Because Chara, this joy of the Lord that wants to express itself so badly that we cannot contain it, that is the reality of the Lord's joy filling you. Because you recognize the grace of God's presence. I, I'm kind of inclined to look at that list that we looked at before. And knowing how blessed you and I are, that these are opportunities for us to recognize God's grace I mean, bacon cooking in the morning? Oh, somebody figured that out. With the help of God, I believe. And we have them to thank in the same way we have our God to thank. And we also are moved then to pray for those who don't know that joy because their bellies are empty. We find joy, too, in recognizing God has gifted us in a way that we can share grace with that one. Chocolate melting in your mouth, popping bubble wrap. <laughs> there is something about it that's bigger than Happiness, because in that moment, it's as if time is still and we are in the same space as the one who is the Lord of the universe. That is not without. Grace comes to us not without responsibility for what we will do with it and for it. Kara, grace, the recognition of God's grace, that is, is the reality of God's joy filling us when we are aware of the very presence of God. I want you to listen to these words written by Ted Loder in his book uh, written eons ago, Gorillas of Grace. Not gorillas, but gorillas like warriors of grace. Uh, there is a little piece called Waken in Me, A Sense of Joy. He wrote it about... Um, the unfolding of autumn. L listen to this. Oh, extravagant God, in this ripening, red-tinged autumn, waken in me a sense of joy in just being alive. Joy for nothing in general except everything in particular. Joy in sun and rain, mating with earth to birth a harvest. Joy in soft light, through shyly disrobing trees. Joy in the acolyte moon setting halos around processing clouds. 
joy in the beating of a thousand wings, mysteriously knowing which way the warmth is. Joy in wagging tails and kids' smiles and in this spunky old city. Joy in the taste of bread and wine, the smell of dawn, a touch, a song, a presence. Joy in having what I cannot live without. Other people to hold and cry and laugh with. Joy in love. Joy in you. And that all, at first and last, is grace. God's grace with us, for us, in us, on us, even through us. This is the kind of grace that God longs for us to recognize, not for his own pride, but for us knowing a little bit more fully the knowledge of our Lord. On the back of that same sheet of paper, you might want to write some of these words down. God's grace for us is just this big. It is saving. Check out Acts 15, 11. It is freeing, says Romans 5, 15. It is redeeming and transforming, Paul's letter to the Ephesians says, it is encouraging, life-giving, sufficient. It is enough because it is always abundant. I'll give you all of those references later. Just hear those words again, my friend. How big is God's grace? Big enough to recognize if you choose to have eyes to receive it. For God's grace is saving and freeing redeeming, transforming, encouraging, life-giving. It is sufficient. It is enough because it is abundant. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mary sang for joy. Right after she said, let it be with me as you say, she went to visit Elizabeth, her old cousin, uh, old literally, uh, now expecting her first child, who would be John the Baptist. When they met in the doorway for that long visit, Elizabeth laughed for joy. John, inside her body, jumped for joy, and Mary sang for joy the most beautiful song, My Soul Magnifies the Lord. Everlasting joy can be yours too. It's not just a response to hearing that Jesus the Christ who died for your sins that you might live with God forever, that that promise has come true. It is also the promise, the recognition that these tiny experiences of grace are huge for us because they're a reminder that God is with us always. And that day when the desert will bust out in song, that day when the dry land will blossom, when the wilderness will rejoice, that is cause enough for everlasting joy. Will you trust it? Will you receive it? For surely your God is with you. During that Friday feeling, or should we say that Sunday feeling, rainbows, a long hot bath, finding a bargain in the sale bin and laughing so hard that it hurts. Can I tell you about uh, something else very quickly? Uh, on their list that the Today Show made, uh, somebody said the royal family. I don't know whether you heard this or not, but the... Uh, head coach for the Boston Celtics was questioned after their win on Wednesday. I hope they won. I'm pretending they did. 
he was questioned not about the game, but about how he felt about the royal family visiting. And he said, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? <laughs> and the reporter chuckled just like you did. And he said, that, that's the only royal family I'm familiar with. <laughs> the innocence of a one whose heart already belongs to the one who comes. Because he came already and he made the holy way for you and for me all these years later. And he comes again in so many ways that we would know the joy of living in his grace, even in a broken world. <clears throat> and we know that he's coming again soon. You better get ready. If you're not ready to laugh and to smile now, I don't know if you can receive that gift. Would you trust that God's grace is enough? And in receiving it, May your joy be complete. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Those first three verses, would you sing with us as we offer our song to God? time for our offering of our gifts and our service to the Lord. Will you pray with me? O oh, generous God, we bring our gifts to you today, and we know we have been given so much by your goodness, but we also know that sometimes we may be tight-fisted and really slow in giving to help others. In this Advent season of preparation, we ask you to help us live in a new way, to walk a new highway, to set ourselves on the path that leads to a closer walk with Jesus. He is our example and our redeemer. May this be the season when he finds the highways to our hearts prepared for his coming. In the name that is above all other names. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
want to sit in my chair? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. This is the time when we normally share our concerns and our joys uh, together. Uh, if we were to all take turns kind of doing it all with our own words, it would take us forever and a day. Uh, that's why we continue to make a list from week to week. Uh, and so those who of our family and friends that we're aware of, names that you've shared with us, uh, their names appear on this list if you've given us permission to do that. Uh, we certainly want to uh, remember those who are listed there. Uh, let me also share with you, Bill Markey is um, recovering post-surgery and doing fairly well. Still in some, he's going to have to go to rehab. Okay, so he's going to rehab. Um, those of you who have been in rehab, you know already. So we're praying for him. Sally's made it through rehab doing pretty well. I'm sorry? Sally is making it yeah, through yeah. rehab early well, so it doesn't have to be the woolly booger that uh, we make it out to be. Uh, Judy Levitt is actually helping care for Jennifer Lambert uh, after her surgery, so we're praying for uh, all of them together as Judy was able to be with her family during that time. I also want to share uh, that uh, Everett Horton had a little tumble last week and um, was not feeling very well yesterday. So they've had two quick ER visits in two weeks. And so uh, he's a little frustrated and Miss Janie's a little tired. And so if you would continue to remember, uh, remember them. And uh, Rebecca Liebarger, uh, who is uh, Jim's sister. And so we pray for safe travel and for all that you hold. Uh, in your hearts as well. I, we've got a big celebration, though, that I want to uh, share with you because I think it's uh, important for us to do that as a church family, too. I don't know if Miss Bonnie's buttons could pop any more than they did yesterday because it was just like uh, Karen's, Brittany, Karen's. Okay, so family reunion for just a second. Are you ready? So Karen and Bonnie our daughter and mother. And so mother's daughter's daughter graduated from college yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's why mama's grinning so big. <laughs> Grandmama has a heart that's full of a lot of different things. This would have been the 52nd anniversary that she and Bob shared together. And uh, this journey of grief is hard, is it not? Even when we hold the kind of joy that made yesterday possible for her and tomorrow possible for all of us. And so we're with you, girlfriend. We're with you. In ways that we can't even begin to understand, may the grace of God reign. Would you pray with me? Lord God, there are more names and situations that we should be able to lift. But in the face of the pain that can come in this world, we, we lose our ability to find the right words. But the same thing happens when we recognize the fullness of your joy and that you intend for joy to be the side effect of simply recognizing how you are gracious to each one of us. We would pray, first of all, that you would forgive us for uh, charging blindly through life, assuming that it's all under our own power, that I'm responsible, that we're responsible for everything ourselves. <coughs> because when we go off half-cocked, we don't see your grace at all. Forgive us for the unrecognized grace, the ways that you are with us always, easing burdens and providing beyond abundance. We also ask for your forgiveness, O oh God, when we allow that joy you intend to be our strength to be stolen 
when we are easily distracted by something that the enemy would lay as an obstacle for us, ways that the world will never be able to provide for us, but we get distracted nonetheless. Forgive us. Forgive us for not recognizing your grace, for allowing your joy to be stolen from us. And we ask by the power of your spirit, as surely as you pardon us, would you give us another chance? Would you pour yourself out on us and for us so that we practice recognizing your grace in such a way that our joy is uncontainable and it is absolutely recognizable to others? With the same kind of joy that Elizabeth laughed and John jumped, and for your sake, O oh God, would you teach us to sing like Mary, a song so full of joy that the world around her could not help but hope in you. As we continue to prepare in this beautiful season for you to come to us, may it be more than just an observation of the calendar but may we tenderly offer you our hearts and our lives. As audacious as that prayer is, we pray in the strong name of the one who came for us. And so we pray the way he taught us to pray. As we say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to close our time of worship today, we just want to say again, we're so glad that you could be a part of this holy time with us. We're going to close our time out uh, with the singing of hymn 218. You can find that in your hymnal or the words will be on the screen, it ca a screen not scream. So, uh, but it'll be on the screen. It came upon the midnight clear. God is moving in your heart and in your mind even now. Would you allow him to have his way? Let's sing uh, unto God as the gift of our joy. Would you stand as you're able?
Sunday, and I, and Sandra came prancing down the aisle and soaking <laughs> all the beauty in, and uh, promised that she would be here the next Sunday. She fell in love with this place before she ever met you. And then when she met you the next Sunday, it was a done deal. And so you have been welcoming enough and peaceable enough to call yourself at home. And so I want you to know that about Sandra. After the service is over with, we want you to come and extend a right hand of Christian fellowship to her and invite her. Now, she's already been playing a lot of Sunday school class, so no fighting. <laughs> okay. But uh, what we do, Sandra, is we ask those who are not coming from another Methodist church, um, we don't think we got a corner on the market. Mm -hmm. But we do remind one another of the importance of living in the body of Christ. And so at the same time I ask you these vows of membership, I'm going to remind these good folks uh, of the vow that many of them have already taken. Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and support her through this congregation with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. And will you? We will. We will. Yeah. All right. Well, then we're in this together. <laughs> and we're a better family because you're here with us. So I know that you'll want to come and greet her. Would you stand again as we share together in our benediction? Go now and walk in the light of the Lord. Stay alert, for the Lord is near. And may God clothe you in the light of Christ. We go, we go in, in peace, peace to, love to love and serve the Lord. The Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we'd love to sing this song. Would you sing with us or at least humor us? <laughs>